Hey everyone, Victor is here, your organic chemistry tutor, and today I want to talk about the reduction of alkynes, which is not one, not two, but a total of three different reactions with different outcomes and different conditions. And I can guarantee that all of these guys are going to be on your next test. So get your cup of coffee and notebook to work through the examples with me, hit that like button for good luck on the test, and let's get started. And the first reaction we're going to look at is going to be a simple exhaustive hydrogenation of alkynes. This reaction, just like the reduction of alkenes, reduces your molecule all the way down to a single carbon-carbon bond. And as in the case of the reduction of alkenes, there is no classic mechanism for this reaction, but we can draw the next best thing to it. So first, hydrogen is going to get absorbed on the metal surface. We can imagine that each hydrogen makes a bond with the metal catalyst. Then the alkyne molecule is going to pick up those hydrogens simultaneously. This is a concerted mechanism, so both of those hydrogens going to jump onto our carbons at the same time. This yields a cis alkene, so both of the hydrogens are going to be on the same side due to this process being a syn addition. But the reaction doesn't stop there, and this addition happens one more time. In the next step, the alkene from the previous step will pick up another pair of hydrogens from the surface of our catalyst, giving the final product looking like this. So this reaction is useful if you need to get rid of your triple bond completely. I don't know why you would want to do that since alkynes are pretty synthetically versatile, but you know, who knows. So this is essentially your universal triple bond eraser. This reaction does show up on the tests quite regularly, so you definitely need to know that. Also, you can use all the same catalysts that you saw in the reduction of alkenes. So we are talking about platinum, palladium, palladium on carbon, etc. All of those guys. So the regular hydrogenation of alkynes gives us a single bond. It's an exhaustive hydrogenation. Well, what if I don't want to reduce it all the way? In this case, I have a couple of options. One option is the use of the Lindlar's catalyst. The Lindlar's catalyst is palladium suspended on calcium carbonate and poisoned by, well, typically lead and quinoline. There are some other versions as well, but lead and quinoline are the most common ones. This allows the reaction to stop at the formation of the alkene and not go further. Mechanistically speaking, this reaction is exactly the same as the first step of the hydrogenation on the previous page, but it does stop after the formation of the double bond and it does not reduce your molecule all the way. It is a strict syn addition that yields a cis alkene for the product. This reaction was quite revolutionary when it was developed in the 50s as it gave scientists a neat and controlled way to partially reduce the triple bond. But since it's a syn addition, you gotta be very careful with how you show your products. It's a very natural way for us to zigzag the chains when we are drawing our molecule, but remember that we are making a cis double bond here. So if your Z goes the wrong zag, so to speak, you'll lose precious points on the exam. So for instance, let's look at this reaction over here. When I draw my product, I must show the correct configuration for my double bond like this. And please don't even try and be cute and draw something of that sort. We both know what you're doing here and you're not doing it right. Now, where things truly become interesting is the partial reduction of alkynes using the alkali metals like sodium or lithium. You can even try potassium if you're brave enough. A fun fact is that the solutions of sodium and potassium in ammonia give a beautiful blue color. Google it, it's actually pretty cool. Anyways, this reaction gives us a trans product and it has a rather interesting mechanism. First, we'll shed the electron from sodium into the solution. Yes, I know it looks weird, but that's literally why these solutions have blue color. It's the solvated electrons that are floating around. Next, our electron is going to bump one of the pi bonds of the alkyne to create a rather exotic species called anion radical. Here, we have an uncharged radical on one of our carbon carbons, and we have a full electron pair on the other carbon, making it negatively charged, or anion in other words. Importantly though, this anion radical is no longer linear like the original alkyne. The middle atoms here are sp2 hybridized, so that forces the molecule to take a bend and become our familiar zigzag. And also, this molecule is going to be most stable when 
one electron cloud is looking away from another electron cloud, so it essentially gives us this trans shape from the get-go. Next, we are going to do a proton transfer. In this case, ammonia serves as a source of our protons, and we are going to make an amide anion as our conjugate base in this step. We still have the radical, so it's going to grab another electron from the solution, like this, and that makes another anion, which will grab another proton from another ammonia molecule, giving us the final product, the transalkene. And if your head isn't spinning after seeing this mechanism, <laughs> you haven't been paying attention. We have everything here. We have full arrows, we have half arrows, we have radicals, we have anions, we have proton transfers and acid base reaction, we have we have it all. Now, I have good news and I have bad news for you, my friends. The good news is that not that many instructors will test you on this mechanism. Some certainly will, so double check with your instructor if you are responsible for this mechanism on the test. The bad news is that this reaction will certainly be on the test, regardless if you need to know the mechanism or not, so make sure you know this one. Remember, this reaction gives you a trans product, while the reduction with the Lindlar's catalyst gives you the cis products. Now, let's imagine we take a sample of hept one ion, or one heptine if you like, and subject it to the conditions of this reaction, What's going to be the product here? You're probably looking at me right now thinking that this would just give a double bond just like this one. After all, I literally just taught you this reaction, right? Well, yes. But the inner Grinch in me refuses to start my example section with the just plain vanilla reaction that works. So if this reaction is performed as written, it will fail spectacularly. Why, you might ask? Oh boy, I'm glad you did. Remember how this reaction produces the amide coproduct, and we know that amides are basic, and I mean basic. More basic than me running into the coffee shop demanding my pumpkin spice latte the first day the hint of the fall just hits the air. So what those basic amides are going to start doing right away? Well, they're bases, so they'll start deprotonating your alkyne, making it unreactive. Which means that if you attempt this reaction on a terminal alkyne, you need, you absolutely need to have some sort of the proton source that would be constantly neutralizing the amide, and this way it won't react react with your starting material, rendering it essentially useless. However, if you do this reaction on a non-terminal alkyne, there won't be any problems outside of the ammonia stench all over the lab, because, I mean, these reactions are stinky. The reaction with the Lindlar's catalyst has no weird limitations or any tricks associated with that, and it works just fine on both internal and terminal triple bonds, like in this example. And of course, if you have multiple triple bonds in your molecule, all these reactions reactions will tackle all of your triple bonds across the board. Neither of these methods that I just showed you are chemoselective. However, remember that the Lindlar's and the sodium and ammonia won't do anything to the double bonds that you might already have in your molecule, while hydrogen on pure palladium will reduce everything. For instance, in this reaction, my double bond is safe. I had double bond to begin with, and after the reaction, I still do have my double bond. While the double bond and the triple bond in this molecule are completely reduced, they're just gone. And that's all you need to know about the reductions of alkynes. Thank you for watching. I want to say special thanks to all Organic Chemistry Tutor members and donors who keep this project running. You guys are awesome. If you've learned something new today, please give this video a like, leave your questions and feedbacks in the comments below, watch this video next, and I'll see you tomorrow.